Hi guys, how's it going? Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We are going to take a look at using uh, determinants and using cross products in order to find the resultant moment on a specific axis of interest, okay? The question here could come in different uh, forms. They could ask you to, for example, find the resultant force on the X, Y, and Z axis or something like that from the force here, okay? Or the resultant moment on the axis is in this question, okay, and let's read the question, we're asked to find the resultant or the moment of the force on a specific axis, okay, so one specific axis, and we're asked to express that result as a Cartesian vector. Okay, so uh, the question asks, determine the moment of the force about an axis extending between A and C. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our diagram here. We have point A here. Okay, I hope my, dry, I hope my diagram's good. I hope you can... Uh, Kind of like understand what's going on here. It's kind of tough to draw 3D diagrams, but bear with me. Okay, we have our ZXY plane here, XYZ. All right, and we have a pipe system that extends along the X direction. Okay, it extends along the Y plane here, and then it goes down two feet. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And uh, the question is asking us to, to, to determine the moment of the force about an axis extending between A and C. Okay. So that's kind of this uh, orange line here is kind of what we're asked to evaluate and uh, express it as a Cartesian vector. Okay, so how do we begin questions like this? Well, um, we need to use something that's, something that's called the triple product, all right? So if you ever want to, or for example, in this question, if you have a, a force that's acting down here, okay, to find the moment of the force about a specific axis, for example, AC, Okay, we are going to multiply the unit vector of AC, okay? And we're going to take the dot product of that times the cross product of the position vector of CB, okay? So the cross product of the position vector of CB times or across the force the vector of this, all right? So let me write that out for you so that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so the moment about AC is going to be equal to the unit vector of AC dot the position vector of CB cross F. All right, so in this problem, you know, uh, if, you, if you're familiar still with the determinants, if you did this in high school or if you did it in, you know, in the first year of uh, physics in university, this shouldn't be a surprise to you. I'm sure you've done triple products and cross products and determinants before, but we'll go through it step by step just so you remember. So what is, and, and this kind of formula, uh, just kind of memorize how it works, it applies to any kind of problem like this, where you have like a piping system with a force acting on it. Okay, so it's the perpendicular distance here, CB, okay, the position vector of that times the unit vector of the axis in which we want to evaluate, and this is gonna be crossed by the force. Okay. All right, so where do we begin here? Well, let's go ahead and let's start by determining the unit vector of AC. Okay, so we're gonna to need to find each component of this formula in order to use it. So how do we find the unit vector of AC? Well, first we need to find the position vector, all right? So how do we find the position vector, okay? So we need to find the ijk components of this, all right? And how do we do that? Well, we have the coordinates of point C, and we know that point A is at the origin, okay? So we are going to start with our x measurement, all right? And the x measurement, okay, in this, particular question, okay? We're considering this is our positive x direction over here, all right? So let's start by writing that the position vector of AC, okay, is going to be equal to, we have four right here, all right? Minus zero, okay, because zero is the origin, okay? So we're gonna subtract the point that C, that C is at by the point that we're interested in, which is the origin and that's going to be our i. Now, what about our y? Well, we have a positive three feet uh, distance from c to the origin here, okay? So that's going to be plus three minus zero, j. And as you can see, c lies in the plane of x and y, so there is no k component. So that is going to be our position vector for ac, right? And we can just rewrite that as four i plus three j. Okay, so now what do we do next? Well, that's a good question. We need to now find the unit vector of uh, AC right here, okay? And as we recall, I'm sure, the 
the unit vector is equal to the position vector divided by the magnitude of the position vector. All right, and let's go ahead and evaluate that. So we have 4i plus 3j, and that's going to be divided by okay, 4 squared plus 3 squared, and the square root of that. Okay. So what is the magnitude? It's going to be 5, and that is going to give us 4 over 5 i plus 3 over 5 j and we can rewrite that as 0 0.8 i and 0 0.6 j so that is our unit vector for ac okay so this part of the formula we have evaluated all right let's move on to rcb okay so what is rcb well uh, just like we found the position vector for vector ac we can find the position vector for BC by subtracting point B, the head, minus the tail, all right? So as we can see, vector BC lies only in the Z plane, okay? There's no X and there's no Y change in this vector. So all we need to do is subtract the K component, all right? And that's going to be, as we can see, two feet downwards minus zero, right? Because it's uh, at the origin there. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have the position vector of CB, all right, and that is equal to negative two, okay, minus zero K, okay? So the position vector CB is equal to negative two K. All right, so we've found RCB, okay? We've found the unit vector of AC and we're given the vector f. Now, all we need to do is evaluate the triple product, okay? And we can do this in the form of a determinant. So if we come over here, and I'm just going to highlight the information that we, that we need to use in order to do that, okay? So this is all the things that we need to evaluate. So what, how we're going to start that, okay, is we're going to take our unit vector and we're going to place that at the top of the determinant. Okay, so I'm just writing this here. Okay, and we have i, j, and k, and we're going to start, like I said, with the unit vector u, a, c, and u, a, c, right here, is going to be, we have an i component of 0 0.8, we have a j component of 0 0.6, and our k component is 0. Perfect. What's the next line of the determinant? Okay, well, it's going to be RCB. Okay, so we're, dot, we're dotting that with the cross product of RCB and F. So RCB, as we can see here, is negative 2K. So there's no I or J component, but there is a K component. Finally, let's fill in our F vector into our determinant here. So we have 4, 12, and negative 3. And all we need to do now is evaluate the determinant, okay? You should remember this from linear algebra as well. Uh, if not, make sure that you brush up on how to evaluate a determinant, all right? So, we can now say that the MAC is equal to, okay, it's going to be 0 0.8 times, okay, 0 times negative 3 minus 12 times negative 2, okay? That is going to be minus... 0 0.6 times, okay, 0 times negative 3 minus 4 times negative 2. And finally, we are going to, and as, as you can see here, add, we're multiplying by 0 here, so we don't need to write that one out because this entire term here is going to be multiplied by 0, that's going to be 0. And if we go ahead and we evaluate what we have here, okay, we should have negative 24 times negative is gonna be a positive times 0 0.8, and that should give us, if we subtract this term here, I'm not gonna write it out, because you, know, you don't need that, it's going to be 14.4 pound feet. Very good, so we, uh, by using the triple product here, we have found what the moment on axis AC is equal to, 
uh, as a result of this force, which is exactly what the question asked. However, we're not done yet. We need to express the result as a Cartesian vector. So, how do we express the result as a Cartesian vector? Well, that's pretty simple. All we need to do is we need to take the magnitude of the moment, all right? We need to multiply that by the unit vector of AC, okay? And that is going to give us our Cartesian vector. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 14.4 pound feet times the unit vector of AC. And we have that here, that's equal to 0.8i plus 0.6j. And finally, the Cartesian vector of MAC is equal to, I'm just gonna write this down. All right. Very good. So I just uh, kind of skipped the calculation part because uh, this video, we don't want it to be too long. And you guys can do that on your own. There we go. So there is uh, the moment exerted by this force on axis AC, all right, expressed as a Cartesian vector. So I, uh, I hope you guys learned something here. I hope you understood the, the process and the formula, what we went over here. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Any comments you have, leave them down below. Like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video.